Tonight, Pat McKenna returns talking Elvis, Dino, Jerry, and Don, plus Jen Coolidge, Pat Quinn, Rick Mercer, Dead D. Giovanni, Alan Arkin, Peter Falk, Andy Kaufman, Cary Grant, Bonanza, Bonami, and why he'd make a good cult leader. We cover some ground. It's Up All Night with Bob. Previously on Up All Night with Bob, Jerry Lewis or Don Knotts? Hmm. Don Knotts. Well, let's talk about Martin and Lewis for just a second then. because So I was expecting you to go hard for, for Jerry just because for Jerry? you're a Jerry Lewis fan. And yeah. I, I, again, now I'm, I'm going to differentiate here between the sort of regrettable, we'll just take away all the, forgetting you know, even the regrettable statements he made at the end of his life about women right. and comedy and all that. But just looking at the performances, um, I'm curious to find out what are the, what's the sort of gold? Is it the Martin and Lewis movies? No, it was really, you know, because when I was young, it was Jerry movies because they were on all the time, you know, like the Geisha Boy and all those, you know, that's my boy and Attaboy and all those that he did. I thought they were fantastic, you know, and they because he was more vulnerable in them. He didn't I didn't see the crazy Colgate comedy hour, Jerry, until later when I got into them. But I was only shown these nice little movies where he was, you know, stumbling and hoping to get accepted and all those things. It was like that's where the Herald thing came from of. That could be, you know, again, just please like me. I want to be one of the guys. And it's like a lot of Jerry came from that as yeah. well as what he did physically to Dean, you know, like in the sense of uh, he just held on to him so much. And I found yeah. that I couldn't do that to Steve, but emotionally I could, yeah. you know, I could just hold him. I just hold him to the point where he would be so uncomfortable just by the energy of, of me almost wanting to jump on him. You know? I'm good. I'm good. It's almost like that dynamic of that old uh, Warner Brothers cartoon with the big with the big bulldog and then the little guy who's always hopping. Yes. Hey, you want I should think up some bones for you? Anything you say, Spike? Because you and me is pals. That's right. Hey, Spike. Hey, Spike. Yes. Right. Like it's a, that was always kind of how Harold. Yeah. Exactly. Moves around this immovable object that is red. Yeah. I guess I could see that in some of those Martin and Lewis movies. And to be fair, I haven't seen that many of them. I enjoy. I, last summer, I I watched. Uh, uh, the caddy, which I kind, which I quite like, just if if, if yeah. nothing else for Dean singing uh, that's amore, and there's some really sweet stuff in it. Uh, this is Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis asking you to see our newest and funniest picture to date. Of course, you mean the caddy. You bet I do. The caddy is filled with 90 hilarious minutes of howls, gags, fun, and heartwarming entertainment that the entire family will enjoy. Crazy man, crazy. No kidding, folks. We're sensational. Take my word for it. Come on and join the fun. See Paramount's the caddy. It'll make you shit. <laughs> Cut out make. <laughs> but there are there are a couple of Lewis movies because I, I just discovered, and I'm a huge Don Knotts fan, which is why I always make the I've got Ghost and Mrs. Chicken back here just because I'm yeah, the best. Don Knotts fan. But I and I, they used Bon Ami. What's that? And they used Bon Ami. Do you know that for, that one from the Ghost of Mr. Chicken? Oh, I've forgotten that. What was the line? every time someone yells out they tried to clean the organ and they used Bonami? Oh, <laughs> they say there are still blood stains on the organ keys. That's right. They've never been able to get them off, and they use Bonami. <laughs> there were so many weird little phrases in that movie that had a boy Luther it would just come out of the. <laughs> He's just... love it. When they, when when they, when that brief moment when everybody thinks he's a hero and he every Don Knotts puffing himself up, you know, as a character is still to me the funniest thing in the world. Just the best to be, to be pricked, right? What was that you just did? Oh, that was just, that's karate. <laughs> I didn't know you knew karate. Oh yeah, I've been studying it by mail for years. <laughs> My whole body's a weapon, right? And yeah, you know, he just, God damn it, he's so funny. See, what do you think is the best movie? What? Or give us two, give us two titles if you can. Give us your best Martin and Lewis movie, and then your best Jerry solo movie. Entirely, um, I haven't seen either one. Well, I would, you know, I would agree with you. I think the Caddy is probably the best because it's really their story. 
Yeah. And uh, Jerry, I would have to go maybe Nutty Professor because oh, there's a couple I, scenes. I do like Nutty Professor. Yeah, because there's a couple scenes in there where he's dancing down the stairs in the end as Buddy Love that just kills me because you yeah. know the camera was set up and how much of that is actual dance move versus improv of what he was doing in the moment that worked. Right. You know, he had the whole, it was, it was shot so well, the camera just set back and let Jerry be on those stairs and yeah. it worked. It was like, he found ways to make that incredibly entertaining. And I, and I found he does that. Sometimes you can explore a moment really well and other times he just slaughters it, but you know, yeah but you're right and it's and, and again it's it's bits like it you you remember bits like when he's yeah uh, I, I don't remember i i've forgotten is it the uh maybe it's the patsy where he's um mm -hmm. boardroom table with the count basie song and he's doing the and he's doing the mime do you know this one yes uh uh i'll slip the clip in here but like uh what are you working on right now that you want to play Other, outside of the i haven't even mentioned all the voice work you've done uh, uh inspector gadget you've done 38 episodes according to imdb of cloudy with a chance of meatballs yeah uh you use a lot of stuff you're, and i basically did harold in that show oh did you yeah that that voice they'll say you know can you do something a little bit nerdier and i'll go well okay I'm, oh that, that's good we like that one he's like all right i'll do they don't know it's harold but it's like that's basically where i go with that Cannery Corner. i've never been more embarrassed it looks like you don't like sardines i don't like sardines gil they're disgusting <laughs> let it sparks don't make me get mayor principal dad involved uh and are you you just finished shooting something up north called pink is in well i'm shooting that in hamilton actually oh, um hamilton. yeah it's for vibe tv's doing it it's about a women's prison uh, that uh, and it's been a crazy, crazy show. It's mostly uh, transsexuals and cross-dressing, and it's just a very bizarre, wonderful world. They asked me to come in as playing like a, a Russian commandant who might be the new warden, and uh -huh. it's like, wow, okay, that'll be hilariously weird. And of course, you know, it turns out I'm he's just a fake, so it's like, oh, good, my accent can be anything now. I am okay. Colonel Quark. I am the new warden. No one is listening. We're all but I was up north shooting a, a show called Hard Rock Medical. Did that for four years, playing a doctor up there oh, in, the, wow. in, that, okay. in that series. So that was a little different. And and Remedy was in there, too. Uh, did that for a couple of years as well on Global. Right. And now I, I'm trying to uh, get into writing because COVID kept me home. So yeah. I thought, well, maybe I'll try writing something. So I'm a huge fan of Deb Giovanni. And uh, oh. so I kind of wrote a, I wrote a film for her. And uh, I'll see if that kind of goes anywhere. That's sort of my enthusiasm of late. Her and Catherine Greenwood is a pair, comedy oh, pair. Oh, I love that. I, uh, I, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I love Deb, and uh, um, I, I want, I'd love to get her on this at some point. Actually, um, uh, that's a great idea. It's funny, isn't that funny about the accent though, where you can go big? Uh, I did a season on Two Broke Girls with. Um, uh, Jennifer Coolidge, uh, who's uh, kind of having a moment right now, and she um had you know played uh oh my god i've already forgotten the name of the character sophie i think it was and sophie i think was initially this is this was all set up before i got long before i got there but i think sophie was initially of polish extraction perhaps and the the accent started out with some specificity but by the time i got there it was just like hi everybody and it would just be <laughs> Eastern European thing, but like, wow, but it didn't matter. Like, it was hilarious. I mean, just yeah, yeah, hilarious. You right? know, I remember when my business first started to take off. The first thing I did was to buy the little village that I grew up in <laughs> and then burn it to the ground. Right? Well, same with like Andy Kaufman and Cheers. You know, he was like that too. Uh, yeah, yeah. no, or taxi. There's no, where, where, where did he come from? You know, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, block. It was just like, oh. Yeah, Which, John, you know, here's an interesting thing that you might like too. I just read this here that Cary Grant, that accent that he did was was completely made up. He was very Cockney, and he but no one he thought he was doing a, a Mid Atlantic North American accent, You're and kidding. that whole time and people, you, no one could pin down where that accent was from because well, he I, thought he was I, doing an American accent well, when he, over his Cockney. Sort of the quintessential uh, Mid Atlantic accent. Tell me, what do you do besides lure men to their doom on the twentieth century limited? In a way, yeah. I thought I was thought to me when I think of it, I go, well, that's the, but isn't that funny? I didn't know that at all. Come yeah, you did it. I just read that the other day. And I thought, wow, that's, that's crazy. Cause he had such a unique voice and sound, you know, and yeah. he was completely unaware of the tool.
Number one, Halloween recently passed. Did you shell out? And if so, what did you shell out? And how many kids did you get? We got four kids, and I gave out boxes of s'mores, <laughs> an entire box of s'mores to kids. Because we don't get many kids, so it's like I can give them so much. Well, they can't. I mean, they can't get past the gates, uh, Patrick. You know, the, the, gate, <laughs> the dogs. You've got the you got the guards. Hey, and the if they towers. get that far, they've earned some s'mores. <laughs> exactly. Um, you've just made yourself a hot, delicious piece of toast. What's going on? It peanut butter, crunchy, crunchy peanut butter. Peanut butter. That's my protein shot each morning: is toast and peanut butter. Number three. Um, uh, uh, going back to traders, your cast: Sonia Smiths, David Cubitt, David Hewlett, Bruce Gray. Who was the biggest pain in the ass? David Cubitt. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Only because he was super busy, super popular, and I had never seen that before. But he was just sometimes hard to, you know, navigate on set because he was just always preoccupied. You, uh, well, he was a big. He was kind of a real uh, uh, hunk at the time, right? Like, I mean, yeah, the, the ladies loved him. Um, oh gotten, my gosh, yeah. I've gotten to know Dave Hewlett just a little bit over the years. I know his sister better, Kate. I had Kate here a few weeks ago about. Uh, Oh, uh, oh yeah, Kate. I see. Well, she and I are friends, and she, she did the. She's just, she's got the swearing jar, uh, which is yeah. right now in theaters, which is really fun if you get a chance to see it. Um, Good. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, number four, you made several appearances on the Rick Mercer Report. Rick, famous for his rants. What can you most often be found ranting about? Uh, I would probably have to say drivers on the number ten highway, uh, who sit in the passing lane doing the speed limit. I live in my car driving, and I just cannot believe how many people just sit there doing the speed limit. Just, I call it being bonanza. You know, when the bonanza, there was the four guys came riding up. Right. You get someone in the slow lane, someone in the path, and you can't pass them. You can't. I'm being bonanza. I can't get past these guys. <laughs> Drives Hots, me nuts. Hots in front of you. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> uh, we're gonna rank some pats. Here we go. We got uh, how many pats do we have to choose from here? Pay attention. Four pats. Pat Harrington, Patrick Swayze, Patrick McNee. From the Avengers, the original Avengers. Yeah. Uh, former head coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs, Pat Quinn. Uh, Pat Harrington, I think. He did. One? He, yeah. He, was he at the top? Yeah. He gets top. And then uh, Patrick Swayze's third coach is second. And who is the other person? Oh, pa uh, uh, Patrick McNee from the Avengers. Patrick McNee would be fourth. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't, a, I wasn't a huge Avengers fan, but Pat Harrington, I remember watching him in different movies. And then when he popped up in One Day at a Time, he's like, yeah, that was a so-so show, but I've seen him in other movies where he's really funny. <laughs> the, the, the show was so-so, but he was, and he was also really funny. Uh, uh, again, this is the kind of thing you can now see on YouTube, but like, uh, I think it was the Steve Allen show. Uh, he yes, that's right. Movie. Many people do not realize that every year courses are given to prospective Santa Clauses to teach them how Santa Claus is supposed to act and speak. <laughs> what is your name, sir, and what course do you teach? My name... Jose Jimenez. <laughs> and I yeah. actually worked with him briefly in the late 90s. He was, uh, I worked for Garth Drabinsky's company, uh, Live Event, before they, they went uh, down the shitter. And uh, I, I was a publicist on Showboat, and he was one of our Captain Andes. We had oh, wow. Captain Andes. We had, uh, we had Tom. He must have great stories. He was great. It's such a sweetheart of a guy. Um, I, I wish I could remember uh, who played uh, a part, his counterpart in that in that particular company. And it was a guy who was, you know, he, he was working. I, I always admire those uh, actors that I see in the background of a movie. And then and they're in a starring in a movie. Then there's co-starring a movie. Then they're in a series. It's like, here's a guy who's working his way up, feeding his family. Good on you, man. What was the first car you ever bought? First car I bought was a, um, hmm, I guess it was a 72 Chev GMC pickup truck. And I, I drove that for like five or six years till it went caught fire. <laughs> it was in the parking lot and I was walking by and I saw the fire trucks. I'm like, oh, look at the fire trucks. I'm standing on Jarvis, walking on the fire truck. And they pull into our building. Went, oh, must be a fire in our building. And I go, oh, and I look around the back and they're going to my truck and they're putting my truck out. Just like, oh, <laughs> something uh, just, that was the end of that. The electrical system. Was it, so there was a 72. What year did you buy it? I got it probably about 79. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. Oh, but, yeah. I mean, trucks back then were like, you know, $600, $800. You know, yeah. nobody wanted a truck. Right. You know? Oh, that's but, true. Well, that's right. Yeah. Different era, right? Yeah. 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 Like, they were so cheap. I'm, I'm buying a Pinto. 
Um, but my wife, I remember my father-in-law, he had a, a, an Astra or something. It was, it cost $2,600 for a brand new car. Couldn't believe it. That's amazing. I can remember when the Hyundai Pony was about seven grand. That was, yeah. That's the cheapest I can, cheapest I can remember a car being. Um, what was the first date with your wife, Janice? Do you remember where you took her? Um, it was at a Tim Hortons. Uh, we nice. went with the Steve. Yeah. We went with the Steve method of I'll meet you there. And if we don't like it, we got a 20 minute stay. <laughs> That's all. we're. <laughs> so it's up to us. If we go make this a 25 minute date or a 20 minute date. Right. And, uh, it's been, uh, 40 years this year now. Oh my God. Congratulations. That's unbelievable. Have you, uh, thanks. have you had your 40th anniversary? No, no, it'd be, uh, it'll be in June next year. We're oh, in 39 now. Oh my God. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's wonderful. Uh, please say hello to her. I remember I, I met her a number of times when we were doing the show and she was always. Absolutely. Me. Um, what's the first album you bought? Uh, Harem Scarum by Elvis. Who's a oh, really? soundtrack to an Elvis movie. Yeah, I yeah, worked yeah. all summer to cut a lawn to make, it was four ninety nine. And the guy, I worked all flipping summer cutting lawns, and the guy handed me five bucks at the end of summer going, thanks a lot. I was like, you, S-O-B. I was so young at the time. I think it was eight, seven or eight. Oh. My whole summer, the guy gives me five bucks. Oh. But anyway, I went and bought the Harem Scarum album, and it was terrible. It was like a bad <laughs> album, too. It was like, oh, no. I can't I'm a huge a Elvis fan. That was like from, the worst album to get. I can't think of a single tune from Harem Scarum. There are uh, every one of those movies, though, and I've watched a lot of them over the last couple of years because TCM will always run them in the summer. Every yeah. one of those, almost everyone has at least one or two pretty banging Elvis. Oh, movies, yeah. Right? Yeah, because, like, I mean, he wasn't recording stuff, so they had to sell that as, you know, as singles, too. So there would always be a really good single in there somewhere. Yeah, somewhere in there. And there are a lot of, lot of uh, uh, chaff among the wheat. But, yeah. Um, uh, favorite uh, Canadian prime minister? Um, I'd have to say Trudeau, unfortunately, Pierre Trudeau. Yes. Only in the way he changed things uh, so much. You know, I was too young to experience what he did for, you know, inflation or whatever. But what he did to the, the social program of Canada was was a mark in the sand for sure. You mentioned Tim Hortons. What's your order, Timmy's? You still, you still, are you still a Timmy's goer? Not as much. I, I'm not thrilled with their coffee now. I just go for uh, like a, a mint tea from them. Because it stays hot when you're driving too, it just stays way hot. So has, I find that the coffee seems to go sour about 20 minutes later, and it's like, ah. It, it is kind of a sour cup of coffee. I always wonder, though, like people have said, you know, talked about the coffee going downhill. I, I uh, well, they got they got bought out by PepsiCo, so it's not the same Tim Hortons that we kind of grew up with. They have changed their coffee, and they uh, they make donuts somewhere else. They don't cook them all on site the way they used to. You know, so there is a a downgrading of the quality a little bit. But no matter what mall you go into, there's a lineup for Tim Hortons, and every other place is sitting empty. You know, yeah. people just love it. Patrick McKenna, what is your favorite Christmas movie? Um, Alistair Sim and the Christmas Carol. This is the fifty. Terrifying. Movie. Yeah, it's that version particularly that I I really. Now here we go. You get spooky and everything else. I, I really love that one. I'm not, you know, I, I still laugh at all the Christmas movies, vacation movies and all that with Chevy Chase and so on. But that one seems to be, oh, now it's Christmas. I Yeah, it's it's funny. I, for whatever reason, that one never became like an annual thing for me, like the way that for years, you know, It's a Wonderful Life. Right. That I've seen probably 40, 45 times. Although lately I've just, I, there have been years now where I'm like, I just can't, I can't watch this movie again. I can't, I, I did the play. And uh, from that point on, it's just, I can't watch the movie. I just, I'm just stunned. <laughs> oh, you did a play of Wonderful Life? Yeah. Uh, I was Uncle un Uncle Billy. I played Uncle Billy and a oh, bunch of the other. Uncle Billy. Yeah. Uncle and I was Uncle also, Billy. I was also uh, the angel. I was the angel as well. Uh, oh, Clarence. Clarence, yes. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I just yeah. love Uncle Billy. He bankrupts the entire operation, and then and then and then they cut into him, and he's got like a squirrel crawling. <laughs> he's just like old batty old Uncle Billy. Why do you even keep this guy around? He has livestock just climbing on. <laughs> um, I, but that Alistair Sims, I will say, I, I and and also I, I, you're right. It is, and it can be, and it's, and it's spooky, and and the best. I think it's the ghost of. Uh, it must I don't know if it's the ghost of Christmas future. Who's the one, the big king looking guy, and he opens up his his robe. That's the future. Is that the future? I think it might I think. be the future. This boy is ignorance. This girl is want. Beware them both, but most of all, beware this boy. But had he no refuge, no resource, 
Are there no prisons? Are there no workhouses? Uh, you're almost out of here. Uh, what's your What's your favorite funny movie? I, think, I guess we kind of maybe we covered this, maybe we didn't. Do you have like a favorite? Comedy? For me, it's the In Laws, the the original In Laws with Peter Falk. This I could watch it over and over and over and over again. It was it was absolute insanity, but Alan Arkin just walks that line of just trying to figure it out before he comments, and then but it's too late. Something else has happened, and it's too he can never quite catch up with the insanity, but he's yes ending the whole time okay i'm trying to make this i want to help i like the, i think i like it. and it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse and that just kills me and and peter falk is just the timing of that guy is just amazing so there's a crook they're all crooks down here at least this one don't make any bones about it welcome to the hell The movie that kind of has that dynamic for me that I can never get enough of is um, uh, Midnight Run. Oh, see, there's, yeah, another great example, yeah. Why would you eat that? Why? Yeah, it should taste good. But it's not good for you. I'm aware of it. Well, why would you do something that you know that's not good for you? Because I don't think about it. Well, that's living in denial. Living in denial? Yeah. I'm aware of that. So you're aware of all your behavior, yet you continue to do things that aren't good for you. That sounds sort of foolish, don't you think so, Jack? No. Stealing $15 million from Jimmy Serrano sounds foolish. And number 20, here we go. Here's a big one. Role that you haven't played that you'd, that you'd love to play. I think maybe like a, uh, a cult leader would be a fun cult thing. Cult leader? Yeah. I would like to be able to take that. Uh, when it works well, you really do possess the audience, too. And And... You know, the, I like that kind of uh, engagement where you, an audience actually trusts you enough to be loyal to you and then be able to twist that. Uh, I would love to be able to play that. That's really fun. I I, I, I could see you. Uh, I could see you uh, 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 channeling your charisma in that uh, particular. Well, plan. that's the thing, too. You know, I, I get that a lot where people go, oh, you're so nice. You're so this, you're so that. And be like, yeah, perfect for a cult leader. <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> I'm so nice I could be a cult leader. Yeah, everybody trusts Pat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, it is uh, it is such a delight to see you again, my friend. Uh, oh, you too, uh, Rob. Me too. Thank you so much for taking time to do this today. And we'll uh, we'll see you on the Possum Lodge podcast. Uh, That'd be great. Now man. on Patreon. Perfect, man. All right, you so take care. Nice to see you. Hey, now that ought to about do us for another one. Next week, comedian Pat Thornton will be here. Good guy. Funny guy. But more importantly, funny guy. All right. God bless you, everybody. Good night.